The Detroit Lions had more rushing yards today than they have in any game in the past eight years, which tells you a lot about what happened today. So, Mark Caboli, how are there so many missed tackles? I mean, they practice every day. Joe Schobert said something interesting about taking practice more seriously. What do you think he meant by that? And the guys in the middle seem to be taking a step, a major step backwards in terms of tackling technique. Well, I think the practice is at this time of the season, we're into November, you would be shocked of how little activity goes yeah. on during the week of practice. Look what happened last week. They didn't practice at all. Wednesday, they had a walkthrough. And, you know, Friday is basically a walkthrough. Saturday is, and they they don't hit anymore. I don't think they're even allowed to hit anymore or put pads on this late in the season. So that, so that has something to do with it as well. As for the missed tackling, I'm just saying, I mean, to borrow words from Tomlin, it's the war of attrition. I mean, those interior guys for the Steelers are just not top-notch players. You're not right. having Tyson Alualu there. You're not having – step onto it there. You're having Bugs, you're having Wormley, you're having Mondu, and eventually that's going to catch up. I think Schobert is a solid tackler, a solid guy in the middle, but what's Devin Bush? I mean, I keep saying that he's going to, you know, play better the second half season. He, this might have been his worst game to, to, you know, so far this year. So I think a lot of it has to do with the injuries across the front, and if Hayward has to take a blow from here, from, you know, one player or another, then you're in really big trouble. I think the yeah, injuries, ahead, Mark, ahead, Chris. I think the injuries obviously across the front and the fact that you don't have the pedigree of player that you expect there is a big part of this. I'm not going to I'm not going to try to to use that though as a way to minimize how bad Devin Bush specifically has been at the second level. Like yes, it would be nice if Alu Alu and Tua were there and yes, guys like Devin Bush would probably be a little cleaner and wouldn't be getting hit at the second level by offensive linemen. But he's still not – I mean, he had a couple plays late in the game where he inserted himself physically a little bit and looked a little bit more the part. But on the long touchdown run, he just completely whiffs trying to come back into the play. I mean, you said it, Mark. I don't think you were defending him necessarily. You were pointing out a different part of this. But you draft the guy 10th overall because you expect him to clean up other people's mistakes, not magnify them. I mean, it's just been atrocious to watch him. He's going the wrong way, and I can't keep using the injury that he's recovering from as any kind of a crutch or an excuse, and neither should anybody else. Well, I mean, the, the troubling thing for me is, you know, when we're watching the game, all I see is, like, it, it, because of the, the Lions weren't all white, they're running with these three, uh, three tackles, you know, and they're basically doing exactly what the Seahawks did and gashing the living heck out of what the, of the Steelers' defensive front, which makes it more baffling that Cleveland chose like to not do that a couple of weeks ago, right? So, um, to me, yes, I mean, I think the tackling to the second level is exposed, but when guys are getting there literally four out of every five plays, like, you're not going to be 100% in your attrition rate. And I'm not a big – I mean, Schobert's a nice guy, but I also think that he's – you know, he has not done anything spectacular to me. Um, it just – I think Devin Bush, because of his pedigree, because of the fact they traded up for him, because of the fact that he looked really good – uh, for that first group, for that first part of the season, um, his rookie year, like I think people just got kind of lost in the sauce there. He is not what he was, but I, I mean, look, there's 10 other guys out there. Mika Fitzpatrick missed a ton of tackles today too. But I think the problem is if you ask these guys to to be taking on offensive linemen and, and full, they had, they had fullbacks and tight ends. I mean, they had like 78 big guys in there, it seemed like half the time. I think they're going to lose those battles. So All I right. think really the big problem is start up front and then fix it behind them. I want to start a couple specific things here. Just go around the horn pretty quickly if we can. Number one, uh, the end of the game, I didn't understand it. They were in Boswell range. And to me, Boswell range is anything inside of 65 yards. His one kick went 51. It could have gone 65. So, Mark, they ran a play to Friermuth, who I understand why he sure-handed on this play. He wasn't, as it turned out. Why not just take it where it is, given the fact they had turned the ball over once already in overtime? Why take that risk? Do you think it was worth it, or you, would you have just let him kick right there and taken your shot with a 57-yard field goal? No, I would have definitely did what they did. They, they needed to get some yards there. I think the issue was Fryermuth was thinking that he had to get out of bounds there to be able to preserve an opportunity to kick that field goal, which in theory he didn't. There were still 15 seconds left. They could have lined up and spiked it and kicked the, what, a mid-50 some yard field goal there so I don't blame him right there I, I don't think you want a game coming down to a 60 yard field goal even though um you know Boswell has been very good at that right there would have been nice to have a timeout at that time so you could use the entire field which we can go into that whole situation of 
some of these questionable timeout calls and overtime. I think they tried the ice, the kicker. I yeah. think they did. I don't know what that timeout was. And the one late in the fourth quarter with four minutes, who knows what happened there. But I really can't fault him from trying to get five or six more yards because, you know, 60 to 54 is, is pretty significant. Yeah. Well, well, Mark, I mean, let's not, you know, let's not get ourselves twisted up here. I mean, timeouts, clock management, those are popcorn things where the Steelers are concerned, of course. I mean, those don't really matter. Nobody cares. Irrelevant. Uh, here's irrelevant, what I say. Right? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Who cares? Popcorn, irrelevant, whatever. Uh, here's what I think about that Fryermuth play. That illustrated to me what really hurts about not having Ben Roethlisberger because you don't throw to a tight end ideally there. You try to throw it closer to the sidelines, maybe to Deontay Johnson, a guy that can create more separation. And if you have Ben Roethlisberger out there, I think there's a trust factor in making that throw with Deontay or somebody else, a wide receiver closer to the sidelines uh, where you can make that play. They threw it to Fryermuth just way too far into the field of play. And even if he does get down, yeah, maybe they get the ball spiked and get another and get the kickoff. But I just thought it was the wrong guy at the wrong spot of the field to try to run that play, and they paid dearly for it. Um, I'm not a big – I don't have a problem with them trying to get more yards. And I I would – again, Chris, I'd go the other way. I'd say if get the ball in the middle of the field, Mm -hmm. that way it's easier for the linesman to get the ball down on the hash mark and spike the ball. I mean, I think that's where I would have gone if I was them. But, look, I mean, I'm trying to remember – so much crazy stuff happened, I'm trying to filter through it. And, and my re- recollection of that play was just that I think Pat was almost trying too hard. I mean, he, if he had just kind of gone down and gave himself a couple of seconds, they probably would have had a chance to spike it. But I think you know, when we saw what happened last week with uh, Santos or on Monday night with Santos, you know, well short from that distance. Um, like, I think, you know, I know Boz had drilled one into the, the closed end earlier in the game, but I really – and as good as he is – there's no such thing as a sure thing. I think another five yards would have made a big difference. All right. Well, I would have done it a lot differently. Run quarterback sneak anything. Get set up. Give me two more yards, and that's it, and we'll take a shot. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to talk about the uh, state of the AFC North, which right now is in flux. Don't know how to describe it. I thought there were a lot of good teams. Now I'm not so sure. We'll get into that next right here on the number one Cochrane Sports Show. Tonight.